Repetition tempo is probably one of the least thought about variables in a muscle building program. Repetition tempo refers to the duration you perform the various muscle actions in an exercise. As a random example, you could perform an exercise with a 3 second eccentric phase, 0 second isometric and a 1 second concentric phase. I recently came across research exploring if repetition tempo could impact regional muscle growth. In other words, could different repetition tempos produce different growth on parts of a muscle? This could make sense, it's possible that performing an exercise with a faster or slower tempo could activate different regions of a muscle more so than others, resulting in different regional hypertrophy. Indeed, Earp and colleagues compared heavy parallel back squat training using a 75-90% to one rep max load throughout the study to jump parallel back squat training using a 30% one rep max load for regional growth of the quadriceps muscles. The jump parallel back squats were performed very far from muscular failure, meaning they were just explosive jumping repetitions, whereas the repetitions for the heavy parallel back squat would have been substantially slower as they were training closer to muscular failure. Heavy parallel back squat training produced greater upper region growth of the vastus lateralis and vastus intermedius compared to jump parallel back squat training. However, jump parallel back squat training resulted in greater lower region growth of the vastus lateralis and vastus intermedius. Given range of motion was controlled between the groups, they both squatted to parallel, repetition speed was probably the reason for these differences in regional growth. Now, this study did compare strength slash hypertrophy style training to power style training. What about the use of different repetition tempos in typical strength slash hypertrophy training programs? Diniz and colleagues split 44 untrained women into one of four groups, a 5 second concentric, 1 second eccentric group, a 1 second concentric, 5 second eccentric group, a 3 second concentric, 3 second eccentric group or a control group. The control group, of course, did not train and experienced no gains so we won't mention them any further. The three training groups performed the knee extension for sets of 6 reps with a 50% one rep max load and 180 seconds of rest between sets 3 times per week for 10 weeks. Weeks 1 and 2 had the subjects perform 3 sets per session, weeks 3 and 4, 4 sets per session and weeks 5 to 10, 5 sets per session. The 5 second concentric, 1 second eccentric group performed the knee extension with a 5 second concentric phase and a 1 second eccentric phase. The 1 second concentric, 5 second eccentric group performed the knee extension with a 1 second concentric phase and a 5 second eccentric phase. The 3 second concentric, 3 second eccentric group performed the knee extension with a 3 second concentric phase and a 3 second eccentric phase. The cross sectional area of the rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis and vastus intermedius was measured at 30%, 50% and 70% of the thigh length. At 50% of the thigh length for the rectus femoris, the 5 second concentric, 1 second eccentric group and 1 second concentric, 5 second eccentric group both experienced similar but statistically greater increases versus the 3 second concentric, 3 second eccentric group. There were no other statistically significant differences. However, looking at the overall data, there potentially could be some other practically meaningful differences. At 70% of the thigh length for the rectus femoris, increases seemed to favour the 3 second concentric, 3 second eccentric group versus the other two groups. At 30% of the thigh length for the vastus lateralis, increases seem to favour the 5 second concentric, 1 second eccentric group versus the other two groups. At 30% of the thigh length for the vastus intermedius, increases seem to favour the 1 second concentric, 5 second eccentric group versus the other two groups. At 50% of the thigh length for the vastus medialis, increases seem to favour the 3 second concentric, 3 second eccentric group versus the 1 second concentric, 5 second eccentric group. Finally, at 70% of the thigh length for the vastus medialis, increases also seem to favour the 3 second concentric, 3 second eccentric group versus the 1 second concentric, 5 second eccentric group. It is important to note that as these differences were not statistically significant, 
we should be cautious here. The observed percentage differences may just be sampling error. Nonetheless, given there was one statistically significant difference between groups, this study does suggest different repetition tempos can produce different regional growth. A noteworthy limitation of this study was all three groups trained the knee extension with sets of six reps using a 50% one rep max load. Due to the differences in repetition tempo between groups, they would not have been training in equal proximity to muscular failure. During typical exercises such as the knee extension, you are limited by your concentric strength, with all else equal, so the reps and load, as was the case with all three groups. Prolonging the concentric phase would make the exercise more difficult. Therefore, the 5 second concentric, 1 second eccentric group would have been training the closest to failure, followed by the 3 second concentric, 3 second eccentric group, and then the 1 second concentric, 5 second eccentric group. This could have confounded the results. Perhaps some of the potential differences between groups were actually a result of differences in fatigue. However, remember, at 50% of the thigh length for the rectus femoris, increases were statistically greater for the 5 second concentric, 1 second eccentric group, and 1 second concentric, 5 second eccentric group, versus the 3 second concentric, 3 second eccentric group. The 5 second concentric, 1 second eccentric group, and 1 second concentric, 5 second eccentric group, would have been experiencing different levels of fatigue, yet, they experienced similar hypertrophy at this region, and both greater than the 3 second concentric, 3 second eccentric group, indicating fatigue was probably not a factor here, rather it seems repetition tempo was the reason. Let's move on to another study by Pearson and colleagues. 13 well-trained men, with at least 3 years of training experience, and could squat an average of 2 times body weight, had one leg assigned to a fast eccentric condition, and their other leg assigned to a slow eccentric condition. They trained each leg on the unilateral leg extension, twice per week, for 8 weeks. The leg assigned to the fast eccentric condition, performed the exercise with a 1 second concentric and 1 second eccentric duration. The leg assigned to the slow eccentric condition also performed the exercise with a 1 second concentric, but they used a 3 second eccentric duration. From weeks 1 to 4, 3 sets with an 8 to 10 rep max load was used for each leg per session. From weeks 5 to 8, 4 sets with an 8 to 10 rep max load was used for each leg per session. As a note, they alternated which leg was trained first each session. Thickness of the anterior thigh, which included the rectus femoris and vastus medialis muscles, was measured for both legs at 40% and 60% of the thigh length. Increases at 40% of the anterior thigh were similar between both the fast eccentric condition and slow eccentric condition. However, increases at 60% of the anterior thigh were statistically greater for the fast eccentric condition. Therefore, this study suggests the 1 second eccentric duration on the knee extension preferentially stimulates the vastus medialis and rectus femoris at 60% of the thigh length, supporting the idea different repetition tempos may induce different regional growth. To sum up, we do indeed have some evidence different repetition tempos can influence regional muscle growth. That said, only two of them evaluated repetition tempo during standard strength slash hypertrophy training styles, so it is an overwhelming evidence. However, if you were to use a variety of repetition tempos in your training program, at the very least, muscle growth should not be harmed. A meta-analysis by Schoenfeld and colleagues found that so long as reps were performed to or close to muscular failure, probably at least 2-3 to three reps away from failure, Repetition durations ranging from 0.5 seconds to 8 seconds produce a similar whole muscle growth, and at best, as we've seen, different repetition tempos may induce different regional growth, resulting in more uniform muscle hypertrophy. I think this is quite an interesting area. I hope more research eventually comes out here. If it does happen, I definitely plan to make updated videos.